Evidence Support Files ESF5, Normal versus Exponential. We continue our series of presentations focusing on individual points to a level that is sufficiently clear and basic as to support court cases as required. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. We continue with the exponential to illustrate the key topics of hump curves and the normal curve, aka normal distribution. In this presentation we discuss mapping growth and growth decline. Tracking the growth of the virus is a critical task. The official method of doing this is to use R0, a measure of growth akin to our growth in cases, but rather more awkward. We'll touch on that anon. Briefly, R0 describes how many people a person is infecting, which means you need to know the infectious period, the chances of someone contacting other people, the chance of infection happening. It is, in short, an arcane measure in the hands of the high priests of fear, the government. Our growth measure is simple. We use basic arithmetic, our case is rising, and by what? Daily factor. A key distinction is that there is no official what should happen over time with R0, whereas, as here, we see a natural and inevitable change in the growth of the contagion. Let's explain that. First, what are we looking for? Looking at on this chart? It is Ebola cases, Sierra Leone, Western Area, Rural. That is the pale blue dotted line indicated. Then there is the autofit normal, which for now is a best fit normal. In fact, it's more significant than that. That's the smooth normal curve in dark blue, solid indicated. Here's the key element. The daily growth of the contagion is mapped in pink to be read off the left axis, which is a log scale. Notice how the pink line declines in an almost perfect straight line through the contagion. That is critical. In fact, reading the scale doesn't really matter. It's the fact that it's declining which does matter. The dashed dark blue line is the theoretical growth decline line based on the autofit normal. More on that anon. Finally, the rate of decline is noted top right. With apologies, we've decided to reverse our original nomenclature. We now use G for growth and F for the factor by which that growth declines. G here is the old nomenclature. The critical thing to remember is that growth initially will be greater than 1 and may indeed be 2, 4 or 7 or more times per day. That's huge. But far more important is that the growth is declining from day 1. Two key things. With growth changing, the rate of change is deemed constant. That straight line through the contagion shows growth declining at a constant rate. So a single figure less than 1 is always the rate of growth decline. That's the key distinction. The growth rate is always changing and starts higher than 1, akin to R0, sort of. The rate at which that growth is changing is deemed constant and is less than 1. Here the growth rate is rising, as is inevitable in the first few days of contagion, going from 0 to 1 to 13 cases, for example. That's an infinite rise and a 1300% rise. But it's not material. The contagion is just getting started. Here, through the primary contagion, is the critical period. And this is where we see the contagion growth rate declining at a constant rate. Think of growth rate as speed, and deceleration is the slowing down of that growth rate. At peak, the growth rate hits unity. Today's cases are the same as yesterday's cases. That will be a critical point for the UK charts, as will the next observation. After peak, with cases decreasing per day, the growth rate is below unity. Yesterday 100 cases, today 80 cases, 20% 20, 20 decline, or a growth factor of 0.8. As the contagion fades, the growth rate remains below unity. Cases are still falling, but the growth rate itself levels off. It might be 0.8 yesterday, 0.8 today, 0.8 tomorrow. It's the tail of the contagion, and we're pretty much done. With the contagion over, tracking the growth rate becomes meaningless and isn't material. This then is the key period, obviously, the primary contagion. And naturally, in the early days when the contagion is getting started, that's when the greatest fear, or opportunity for creating fear, exists. Psychologically, once we hit peak, the crisis is over. We can relax. And once the contagion is dying down to minimal levels, we can get back to normal. Except that never happened, did it? You might wonder why, but then nothing about the UK COVID event is normal. 
The key thing to remember though is that we can track the growth of cases or deaths very easily. If cases yesterday were 20 and today they're 30, that's a growth factor of 1.5, 50% increase. And beyond everything, this is the one key thing to remember. You're seeing it here for real with Ebola, you'll see it in COVID. From the very beginning, that growth rate was declining. That's normal, not exponential. Even if you had no idea about normal curves, even if you disagreed utterly with using a normal distribution for contagion, none of that matters. This is just arithmetic. The growth rate, day by day, is declining. Why is that so critical? Well, what is the definition of exponential? It is a constant rate of growth, doubling every five days, doubling every seven days, constant, unchanging, which is a horizontal line on a chart. It is the very definition of exponential, constant growth, Valence and Witty, September 21st, 2020. If that continues unabated, doubling every seven days, constant, exponential, explicitly stated by Witty and in the joint statement. But it doesn't stay constant in a normal or typical contagion. In fact, the decline is apparent in the earliest days of the contagion. This is Ebola. You're going to see it in COVID, in SARS, in flu, anywhere where you see that classic humped contagion. It's inescapable and right there. Hubei, China, over by March 15th, before Ferguson even published, before the UK went into lockdown, and utterly normal in cases and deaths, with a growth decline rate of 0.975. Declining, growth decelerating, exactly as you'd expect. You literally cannot draw a humped curve without that declining growth rate. Declining, not constant, not exponential. Hubei deaths, growth rate declining somewhat more slowly, 0.990, but declining as it has to, else it wouldn't look like that humped curve. And this was before we even went into lockdown. Normal, not exponential. Korea, the first land contagion outside China to complete shortly after Hubei. Declining, inevitable given the humped normal curves available even before the UK went into lockdown for the cases data. Not exponential. Germany, declining, perfectly normal, not exponential. UK, declining, perfectly normal, at least until peak, but more of that anon. Declining, normal, not exponential. And sear this into your brain. Declining, perfectly normal, even before lockdown was announced on the 23rd of March 2020. Never exponential, not even in the very beginning. And yet Valence of Witty have the temerity, six months later, to present an exponential virus. Simple arithmetic, growth and growth decline, utterly debunking the exponential meme. Every use of the term exponential to support COVID measures or any reference to keeps growing, continues unabated, etc. is fraud. Criminal fraud. It's just arithmetic and asking us to believe that the most experienced scientists and advisors in Britain don't know this. It's like saying they don't know how to find the area in a circle. The length of the diagonal in a right angle triangle. Really? We are living through the longest, most damaging, most malign fraud in British history perpetrated by our own government in defiance of the most basic and simple facts. And this is one of the biggest and most important. That's it for now. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrew at maymather.com. Either should get to me.